Namaste and welcome to this edition of The Right Stand, ladies and gentlemen. When I say Batla House, what comes to mind? When I say the Indian Mujahideen, what comes to mind? When I say the Lashkar, what comes into mind? When I say the Jaish and Muhammad, what comes to mind? When I say the ISIS or the Daesh, what comes to mind? It's radicals, pan-Islamists who are here in our soil, who are using it to hurt our country. And these are elements who are working within. When I say Batla House, it is infamous for harboring those who had an agenda against India and the very ethos of our country. Now in the latest that has come to the fore, there is a student who is so radicalized that he was actually organizing funds. One radicalized, two honey trapped into doing it. Originally hailing from Bihar, he got radicalized or indoctrinated somewhere in Kota, but he has been operating right in the heart of the national capital in this area called the Batla House. Let's try and understand a little more about this person and the challenge that we have as we dive into our first debate here this evening, ladies and gentlemen. First up, this Jamia speaker. It is the Right Stand exclusive, a Jamia student who is a radical, ISIS radical, who's arrested. Now, these are what sources within the NIA are telling us. This is exclusive information to CNN News 18. Kutsi, our investigations editor, Manoj Gupta. Let's go through it one by one. His name is Mohsin. Mohsin intensely radicalized and was under the NIA watch for a while. His activities have been under their watch for a while. They've been seeing what is he trying to do. Now, he developed links with the Daesh while he was in Kota. Now, Kota in Rajasthan. Once again, the state comes into the news for all the wrong reasons. This area, Kota, is a student's hub. A lot of them go there for the coaching classes to prepare for various entrance examinations. And uh, they come from, they go there from all across India. This guy, he is from Bihar. Now, he, they, what he did was, once he got indoctrinated or got radicalized, he raised funds for terror activities via crypto funding and crowdfunding. That's what he was trying to do. He was raising, collecting money, and then he was transferring this money using cryptocurrency and the platforms. He had developed very extreme plans, and he picked up, he was picked up to ensure that there are some checks and balances and they will now go ahead and perhaps crack down on others who are part of this entire group. The lens is on Mohsin's associates in Jamia University and also in Kota in Rajasthan. He's a massive catch ahead of Independence Day because there was some bada karnama or harkat that they were planning to do. What else was he doing? This person, why was he trying to raise funds? What activity did he want to do? And what was his connection? His connection, ladies and gentlemen, is not with ISIS Khorasan province or Daesh Khorasan. It's with ISIS, the actual ISIS based out of Syria. He was asked to send money via the crypto route. This is the interrogations detail and these are the new dimensions that are, uh, that are emerging. One, he was asked sending money via the crypto route. That comes into play. At least 4 lakh rupees he had, Karepa, he had collected and he had sent across in cryptocurrency. And this money is under the NI lens. The other thing is terror funding via crypto and uh, this wallet which was being used. He was also in direct contact with a female ISIS operative. Now, here is where it gets very interesting because these operatives are the ones who are being trained to be used as honey traps. So, quite literally, love jihadis is what the NIA is saying. Interrogation details also say that Daesh's global network had contacts in Syria, Indonesia, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. He was in touch with Daesh operatives in these countries. Once again, Bangladesh comes into the picture. This network was spread across multiple nations. He was also funded this network and he was getting funds via the Afghan drug trade. Not so far long ago, if, you, if I can jog your memory, Right from this very area of Batla House, Shaheen Bagh, there was a huge crackdown which had happened of a heroin bust which once again unearthed this entire narco terror route. So everything seems to be having hubs and spokes, ladies and gentlemen. Somewhere are they all connected? That's the bigger question. And what are the... the look at the entire web. In the recent past, there's been a crackdown. We've been asking for this internal crackdown on radicals. If there are Trojans within, if they are deeply embedded, they need to be weeded out. Where are they? It starts with Bhatkal, Zufi Jawahar, Damudi. He was arrested. And when he was arrested, his interrogation detail gave us more inputs. And the inputs led the sleuths to crack down across 48 uh, 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 locations in 48 hours across seven states. 48 people were arrested. They were all connected with this radical group which was also pushing out social vitriol, social venom on social media. And they had direct links to Daesh Khorasan. 
Some of them were inspired by Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent. Whatever name they call themselves, the inspiration was radical and it was highly, highly uh, intent on a pan-Islamist agenda. Voice of Hind had a lot of Indian literature. And that's why, who are these people? And that's where it came in. This inspiration of Sartan Sejuda call, again, radicals, alien to India, but then they were pushing it. And now, again, somewhere, this guy, Mohsin Ahmed, again, inspired by similar, similar ideology, comes in. So this, this web of radicalism is growing in our country, somewhere inspired by the Al-Qaeda in the Indian state and also the Daesh or the ISIS. Now, can they be loosely spoken over each other because both stand from different segments and one is at loggerheads with the other, but their agenda is pan-Islamist. Ansarul Bangla arrests have happened in Assam today also, ladies and gentlemen. That's another big story and that we will bring to you more details come Tuesday. But let's focus on this aspect, that the moment there are arrests which have happened, it's not that everybody and anybody living in that locality has been rounded up. One particular specific individual has been rounded up. Why is it that Netas jump to give cover fire immediately? Why is it that an MLA of the area belonging to the Amadmi party would immediately come out and say he is innocent? Why is this cover fire given? Is it a political compulsion? Are you trying to protect a vote bank? Does one radical amongst a whole community represent that entire community? Aren't you trying to stand up and say that when you give cover fire to such individuals? Why should you turn around and say that the BJP is maligning Muslims in the name of ISIS? Why can't you turn around and say that radicals like this are maligning the Muslims of India when they try and push a pan-Islamist agenda which is not an Indian ethos at all? Why can't you take a position that such people do not represent the Muslim community in the country? When an Amanatullah Khala Khan bats for Mohsin Ahmad, is this not open brazen cover fire? And that's a simple question we ask. Why give cover fire for radicals? Crackdown on radicals is the hashtag. Let's go straight across into the debate. I have Shazia Almi of the BJP joining us this evening, national spokesperson of the BJP. Professor DK Giri, political analyst, and Rajinder Kumar, former special director, IB, also with us. Namaste, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Shazia Almi, when an Amanatullah Khan stands up and tries to say he's only a student and tries to defend him, is he not guilty of trying to make sure that this, this person, this, this radical, represents the entire group or community living in that area, in his area. Rather than turning around and saying, if he is a radical, please investigate. And he does not represent us because we have no place for radicals. What should be the position? So Anand, first and foremost, I would like to say that it's not as uh, simple as that. Um, you know, I was uh, in Ahmadmi Party. I was in fact a founder, mm. co-founder of Ahmadmi Party. And one left on so many grounds, and this being one of them, people like Amanatullahs have actually supported uh, terrorists accused and then convicted, mm. like Shehzad Khan. And you know who Shehzad was? Shehzad was the one who was accused of killing and then convicted of killing MC Sharma, the mm. inspector in the Butler House Encounter. Yeah. He rose to fame by supporting this terror convicted, uh, now convicted. And later on, the same Amanatullah was seen with Sharjil Imam. And now he is actually say, calling it unconstitutional. The NIA detention of uh, Mohsin, he's calling it unconstitutional and everybody is just sitting quietly. Because they get cover uh, for, the, for the radicals, that is why there is a whole, uh, there's a burgeoning uh, rise of radicalization because somewhere mm. it is being seen as uh, witch hunting for Muslims. But mm. this has nothing to do with that. Correct. I think we should call a spade a spade. This mm. has nothing to do with no compromise on national security should be excused whatsoever. It doesn't matter what religion a person comes from. But there, there is a party and there are enough voters of that party and enough supporters of that mm. party. Doesn't matter if you don't like the BJP. The fact of the matter is that this is something very serious. Yeah. And uh, this is the same Amanatullah who has been charge-sheeted. Uh, you know, in, in, in beating up of the chief secretary, let's say, Anshu Prakash, just in mm. yesteryears. But people are just quiet about it because they want to support Aam Aadmi Party. Mm. So I think it's time we all get up and say that this is not all right. There are serious charges against Mohsin, uh, 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 mm. this person. Uh, through cryptocurrency, he was funding. And we're talking about the designs of Daesh. Yeah. What, what are we talking about? This is something very, very serious. And do we want our youth 
to be antagonized to the extent that they get uh, tempted by the likes of uh, of daesh and uh, and and that is a danger to our uh, to muslims and hindus of the country alike you know no, it totally doesn't matter agree. which religion you come from See, we are indians after all no, my so point Arun, is this is my, a very serious question true my point is and i think arvind kejriwal should answer that question well, arvind kejriwal so far has not answered that question and he has totally sidestepped that entire matter altogether it seems to be that is a domain of amanatur khan himself and he calls the shots about what he wants to do in that area and even arvind kejriwal doesn't seem to have a say there but dk giri we must turn around and ask this question what is he trying to do is he trying to paint everybody who lives in that area in the same hue as mohsin when he steps up to give cover fire to a guy without having one ounce of proof why should you produce, pronounce somebody not guilty what? when there is evidence against that person that's why the cops have arrested him in the first place yes anand i don't think he is doing co uh, giving cover fire he cannot and uh, as a politician he is doing his uh, uh, job Uh, and he is not going to influence the investigating agency you see there are two things involved in this statement one is a politician there is a law enforcement agency there are laws in the country politicians will speak what they want and it is their right to do it hmm. okay and he is articulating the general um, perception that investigating agencies are harassing people but in this case from your uh, account this guy is uh, uh, guilty and he should be punished by the nia so Correct. law will take its own course but amanullah khan like any politician is articulating his position maybe he addressing no, so is, is he really articulating is he does okay. he is he really yeah. doing his duty as a politician mr dk giri my point is what is the perception Are, yes. have has everybody who is living in batla house yes. been branded a, a, a terrorist by the bjp or by the investigating agency the nia or has amanullah branded everybody who is living there equal to mohsin who's done the disservice okay you know, there are there are uh, different uh, uh, perceptions in politics if you take william key politics is a noblest prof profession if you listen to ba ba button russell he would say politics is the last stage of counters politicians will do what they are doing so i do not think we should give any level to politicians it, it is sir, their this job is a very in specific question. politics to pander no no hmm. saji i will me that we cannot sit on judgment no, it is not the job no, you no. are doing your politics no no mr giri mr giri politicians are very important you joined bjp the fact Listen, yes i was just mentioning you change yeah, your party yeah i mentioned that i mentioned that you why i mentioned that even in the i, I mentioned that mr yeah, giri you also so are a politician you are also a politician you are anti bjp politician you are also a politician you are you are a modi hating politician i accept that i said openly and you don't You are also a politician. I am not. That you are also a politician, Mr. Giri. That's why you are side stepping the issue. Again. You are also a politician. You are also a politician. Yeah, you are also a politician. politician. So no, no, no. Don't wear a don't wear a holier than thou. You are you don't wear a politics. holier than thou hat right now by calling me a politician. Okay. You are equally a politician, sir. By by okay. you have been on many debates. You okay. have been on many okay. debates with you me. Ja, so do not do not pretend to be holier than thou. Yes. So do not do not cast aspersions on me. Just like just like I shouldn't. No, no, no. Do not. Do not. You are very much okay. a politician. I just say where I am, but have you and you don't. That have doesn't you make you holier than thou. Anand, ask me, sir. No, I'm not. I'm not. So do not no, take no, my name in vain. Do not side step the issue. You, you don't make it about politician versus opinion. everybody you because think. he gets voted to power. He gets voted to power for the second time, and Muslims in that have area would think that when he calls NIA unconstitutional, you are working against. When he calls Butler House and Counter fake. You are going against the High Court. You are going against the Supreme Court. You are going against the NHRC. So this has a very specific Anand, thing to say about the people who vote for He's people like him. Spokesperson, people, so people right will speak for all half so, an hour. I, I don't mind. But you, you, if you ask me, you ask me when she finishes. Okay. How convenient. Sajia, you just How convenient because you got you, you got totally no, again, again. Uh, and what about your politics? What about your politics, okay. sir? I called out your politics. Yes, I am not any political don't party. Don't pretend now. We I all know your politics. politics. I don't change political you parties are. like you do. Oh, Listen, Sajid really? Ali, I do not change my political party as per convenience, what's, what's as per opportunity. I am not. Do not belong yes, to a political yeah, party. Yeah, you remain okay. loyal to. You remain loyal to Sajid Ali. You remain loyal to Sajid Ali. You put what to my mouth? No, no. Why did you say I'm not a politician? This is the. This is the. This is the. This is the point. There is a difference between. No, for Sajid Ali, it's very simple. For Sajid Ali, there is a difference between doing the politics that she thought Arvind Kejriwal would do. 
and doing the politics that she is seeing the BJP is doing today. So there is a difference in the brand of politics or the kind of Correct. politics. With Mr. With That's Mr. Mr. Right. D K Giri, there is no yes, difference in the politics because his agenda is yes. very clear that whatever the BJP proposes, we have to oppose. Now, whether we support somebody else or not, we will no, oppose. No, so no, that no. is his unilateral position. So he is entitled that he is entitled that, that position because that. I am I am just thinking, Mr. D K Giri, that had it not been Amanatullah Khan. And had it had it been Sadhvi Pragya who had said the same thing about somebody else in this state, would you have said the same thing that politicians have a job to okay. do and politicians will take a position and one person says politician is a boon, the other person says politician is a bane, but they are just doing their duty. Would you have said the same thing? Touch your heart and tell me. Okay. You would have been the first person saying, Anand, today where, are, where is your voice? Anand, today why aren't you going after Sadhvi Pragya? That's exactly what you would have said. I'll give you the answer. Yeah, I'll give you the answer. Mm. I'm telling you, in electoral politics, people will address their constituency and they are entitled to do it. Correct. But, but what are you making your... What? No, no, sir. Criminal, people... No, no, one, one minute. Don't one second. One minute. One minute, sir. One minute, sir. Don't give a judgment. Don't give a... No, word, you have judged the constituency politics. today, sir. That is all I'm saying. No, oh, what you have done, Mr. D.K. Giri, what you have done, Professor D.K. Giri, is that you right now have sat down and not just Amanatullah Khan. You have judged the entire constituency of Southeast Delhi, especially that area of Shine Bagh and Shah Batlaus and uh, that, that Okla area, and said that all of them are people who are radical minds, who believe that radicalism is all right, and who believe that people like Mohsin can okay that are okay to exit, and they are doing nothing wrong. Correct. Because that is why, because because you said you said Amanatullah Khan is Amanatullah Khan is addressing his constituency. Did you or no, 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 don't shout over me, DK Giri. These are your words. These are your words, D.K. Giri, that Amanatullah Khan is practicing the policy of policy of addressing his constituency. If Amanatullah Khan is addressing his constituency, then Amanatullah Khan would say that there is... No, no, one minute, sir. One minute, sir. One minute, sir. Why call him out? Why are you, why are you shouting over me? Because I caught you, didn't I? That's why you're shouting over. No, I'm not. Right, you I'm just not. said that Amanatullah Khan is addressing his constituency. Then you accept that Amanatullah Khan has branded that entire region as terrorists and radicals. Because what, what has been, who's been arrested? No, one person, one not, person has been arrested the for... The entire region has not voted him. No, no. So then why did he, why is he, why is he giving cover fire to this student who's a radical who you believe should be arrested, who should be put behind bars for his actions? Why is he giving cover fire? Is he addressing his constituency or is he, is he doing a disservice to his constituency? Now then tell me, then tell me, is he addressing his constituency or is he doing doing disservice to his constituency? Sir, you've been caught in the web of your own argument. And that too, how? That 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 you caught, you've, you've tangled yourself with both feet so much so that if you move now, you will fall. That's how, that's how you've been caught yourself. That's how you've caught yourself. Yourself in your own argument, sir. You, I am telling you very simply. I if he's, if and he, you can say that, Anand. No, sir. You, you no. If you claim, if you claim to be, if you claim to be, if you claim to be somebody who can understand the rationale of your argument, let me break down your argument. You said Amanatullah Khan is doing what every politician does. That is address his constituency. You also said that this man, Mohsin, yes. prima facie looks guilty, looks a radical. He should be put behind bars. Now let me tell you, if he is addressing his constituency yes. and Amanatullah Khan says that this person is not in, is an is an innocent student who's been deliberately arrested by the BJP, then what is he doing? Is that not a disservice to his constituency, or is he branding his constituency as totally radical and pan-Islamist, or is he or is he saying that DK Giri is also wrong when he says prima facie this man Mohsin is a radical who's backing the ISIS and he's got a, he's got no place in society? He is making a ah. political statement. Ah. And Sadiya <laughs> is entitled so, to criticize. Sir, you got that. caught. What sir, what happened is you tried to do so a well left, then you tried to drive, but you got clean bold. That's Let me go I'm across saying. to Rajinder Kumarji and quickly ask him. One minute, sir. Sir, well tried. Sir, well tried, sir, but but only one batting per inning. You can't you can't do two, three battings in the same inning. That's not the rule in cricket. But you tried to play all over the ball, you danced all over it and you got clean bold. That's what happened. But Rajinder Kumarji. Rajinder Kumarji. No, one minute. One now, now let me go to Rajinder Kumarji, sir. Please yield. Okay. Rajinder Kumarji, former special sure. director IB, is with us. Rajinder Kumarji, this is a serious issue. When you have Neta's elected representatives standing there and, and trying to bat for radicals, trying to give them cover fire, thinking they are scoring political pot shots, you are branding that entire region as radical and pan islamist you are, you are branding your entire constituency as an IS sympathizer. I am asking Rajinder Kumarji, please don't interrupt. You hawk 15 minutes of this debate. Let him speak. He has not spoken yet. Yes, Rajinder Kumarji. Uh, 
अनंत जी नमस्कार नमस्ते सर नमस्ते अनंत जी सी दी थिंग इज दैट कि पीपल लाइक कमानातुल्ला कमानतुल खा दे दे इन फैक्ट दे आर डूइंग अ बिग डिस सर्विस टू द कम्युनिटी बाय सेइंग दैट ही इज इनोसेंट और ही इज लेट मी टेल यू इन इंडिया द सिक्योरिटी एजेंसीज हैव नो मेलाफाइड अगेंस्ट एनी कम्युनिटी इन फैक्ट what i will tell you is that in my experience of 35 years what i have found whenever the police and the security agencies has acted in time against any radical element this society has been uh, saved and the biggest example i will give you in, after in 2003 uh, in 2002 and 2003 uh, early 2003 lot mm. of things were uh, growing in gujarat yeah the police and the security agencies did us uh, they they uh, joined together and they they caught hold of the real elements who were getting support from pakistan who were getting arms and ammunition from pakistan who were getting funds from pakistan and i can assure you and i say can say with pride for five years in gujarat not a single muslim was uh, maliciously arrested not a single muslim was harassed or anything happened to the muslim if we if the security agency catch a, a genuine uh, person and they try to catch genuine person that we tell you in, in india the security agency has no prejudice against any caste or community mm. i can assure you that it is not that the people in this uh, these type of matters illiterate people deal these things these uh, the officers are very well trained the officers are high intellect and they will never catch hold of a innocent person yes there may be shortage of evidence because of which people can get uh, get free hmm. but one thing is there that they are target they whomsoever they uh, they try to control is a, a genuine person who is involved in some uh, pernicious activity hmm. this much i can say with pride and without any reservations hmm. so these persons like amanatullah khan and others they do big this service if they help the society if they help the agency to tell them that yes there here is a person here is this thing then agency will not search so many people and pick up unnecessarily what happens is, mr anand you have seen hmm. agency whenever there is something wrong like uh, what has happened in the recent riots in delhi uh, police agency has to pick up a lot of people from all the communities why innocent you in that many were innocent also Why Correct. innocent people are picked up because nobody came to help the agents, uh, security forces. Ki who are the real culprits? If the real culprits are identified by the people themselves, I'm sure nothing, no hmm. innocent person will be uh, hmm. uh, uh, net. And second thing, now I tell you another thing. See the the hmm. uh, ideology of ISIS has been right growing uh, uh, in uh, but uh, Butler House area yeah. from 2010. Huh. In fact, in 2011, I made a note on a, an organization which uh, propagates this ideology and which has tentacles in Delhi, Indore, hmm. Lucknow, Pujabad, Chennai, Bangalore, Bangladesh, Pakistan. We have uh, uh, South East Asian. Huh. We have prepared a note and sent. I got it sent through my chief's uh, signature huh. to the, the then Prime Minister, and all the agencies were briefed also. the whole all the police forces were also brief, brief. and we gave them the, this thing so huh. this uh, this uh, this uh, ideology has been growing in say, in some part of the uh, uh, patla house hmm. and who are these people they are extremely uh, extremely qualified in technology they are very tech savvy they uh, I, i'll tell you not, not uh, many normal btech uh, graduates can deal uh, can handle their type of technology which they know so they are very tech savvy they, they 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 can do anything on the computers they can do anything on the internet mm. extremely and they are spreading their tentacles and they have links in south of south africa central and uh, Uh, no, if that is if that is the case, if you are if uh, you are saying Rajinder Kumar ji that this has been there, been active for nearly a decade now, then we have a serious problem at hand. And Shahzad yes. ji, this is this is where this is where the problem is that when somebody like Amanatullah comes to try and defend somebody like a Mohsin as a radical, 
is he trying to say that no i am going to give cover fire to radicals because everybody in my area is radical and shares the same thought then that that should be rejected outright why is he getting elected then from that area repeatedly well it's a it's a cause for worry and uh, this is exactly the kind of politics that has to be that has to be shunned and abhorred and which is why i want to because there was a personal comment made against me so i don't think the loyalty should be to a party so mm. but the loyalty has to be towards the nation yes and i think nation first and uh, individuals and parties much later Correct. so i think that's very important and mr giri should know that you know most importantly so i am so glad and i think every self respecting and patriotic person mla or mp should not be part of our exercise like this or a party like this and should leave it uh, and even voters and i want to appeal also to 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 the to the voters uh, of manathullah's uh, who keeps getting a ticket from there that somebody like him who really does is doing a biggest disservice to muslims of the area by by you know by uh, literally equating them Hmm. with the radicalized terrorists because we know that the narcotics bureau found so much of heroin from the area yeah. we know how much of uh, 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 you know narcotics has been seized from the area and also the currency there is something crazy is going on there and this has not to be encouraged instead of calling nia wrong or the Indi uh, or the high court wrong or the questioning supreme court it's important to say as a representative that doesn't matter my politics on a party doesn't matter hmm. as much as the goodwill of the community well being yes. of the community especially muslims who are being who are always being excited and incited uh, and told that oh there is some danger against you you know how evil these are and to be radicalized in a manner that they they the work against the interest right. of the country which is which is the watan Absolutely. So I think it's a very serious issue, and it has to be addressed totally. And calling us spade a spade is extremely important. And I'm very proud to have left the party and to have joined the BJP. No, not extremely just that. Extremely proud uh, of the fact, sir. What you meant as an insult is actually a matter of great pride for me. No, that that is your part, no, and I respect and your position as your point as an individual. My my larger question is that yes. you know Arvind yes. Kejriwal as Delhi Chief Minister and the Amadmi Party is going to take out a tricolour yatra. They are saying that okay. our interpretation of deshbhakti and rashtraniti is different from the bjp yes, but we are yes. equally patriotic if that is the case then there should have been the first admonition of amanullah khan because what he has done is the biggest disservice to his constituency because by trying to bat for a radical and a isis sympathizer like mosi he uh, he has tried to paint the entire region as isis sympathizers that's the biggest disservice that he could have done uh, so so that that has also not that exactly that has also not happened yet that has also not happened yet but he's calling he's calling the nia he's calling the nia investigation fake he called butler yeah. house encounter fake we lost one of our inspectors mc sharma it doesn't matter if he was a hindu or a muslim we we lost one of our inspectors and a Correct. constable was br brutally wounded by a terrorist it doesn't matter if he's a hindu yeah. it, or a muslim that, that is something which cannot be the perpetrators of crime of all who they were that is something yes. which cannot be so forgotten that's the point that i'm making so we should right Thank you, thank you, Shazia Almi, Rajinder Kumar Ji, and Dikhi Giri. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, quickly jumping into debate number two, ladies and gentlemen, from India to international waters. That's what we wade into. This entire braggadocio, this bullying, and this uh, display of military power in the South China Sea, and so many explosions, live missiles. Is it all to try and counter a simple question? Why did you allow Nancy Pelosi's plane to touch down in Taiwan? if you are such a super power and so fiercely nationalist and believe taiwan is your territory that's a question that the chinese are asking xi jinping so is this the right time to tame the bully let's dive into debate number 2 let's look at this ladies and gentlemen pelosi in taiwan heat and ji because the bully in the region largest ever military exercise that even violates taiwan's territorial waters and the borders missiles flying over taipei landing into the japanese economic zone that also has happened aggression in south china sea japan was on the radar all of that has happened then you also have the aggression that comes where it orders apple to address taiwan as chinese taipei and tells uh, apple to instruct the taiwanese counterparts and the oem manufacturers that don't write republic of china or to made in taiwan write chinese taipei otherwise we will not produce your product it's turning up the economic heat on taiwan but the blowback that's coming against xi jinping with nationalists angry over rising global recognition of taiwan 
causing anger over a weak response to Taiwan. Why did you blow that plane up? Why did you, why did you allow the Pelosi to touch down in Taipei? U.S. violations, a big leg up for CCP's opponents ahead of the key plenary. And there's heightened pressure for Taiwan reunification. They are actually calling for speedy imposition of the One China policy, saying you rude, truly mean it. Try and walk the talk. But can Xi Jinping do it? Is this display of strength his weakest moment? That's the question. Should the world blink to Xi Jinping's bullying? We are asking. Let's go straight across to our guests. Ambassador Parthasarthi with us, Dr. Raju Liu with us, and Maximilian Hess, fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, also with us. Namaste. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Raju Liu, Associate Professor of Flame University, and he was actually in Taiwan, somewhere on the streets of Taiwan the day Pelosi touched down. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Raju Liu. So the world was watching that flight tracker, but it, thinks it looked like business as usual in Taiwan on ground. How are the Taiwanese responding to this? Well, the Taiwanese... <clears throat> Thank you, Anand, uh, for having me. Long time no see. Yes. Um, <laughs> Long time. Well, I was, I was, I was in Taiwan when Pelosi visited. Well, the Taiwanese people were viewing this as, uh, well, they don't, they take it seriously, but um, they are not afraid of the Chinese reaction, especially. They, they were looking for the visit of Nancy Pelosi. Nobody says no. Mm. So when Nancy Pelosi actually touched down, actually people are very excited that they they view this as a you know very strong gesture from the U.S. to counter China's attack and bullying of Taiwan in the international arena. So like you said, the Taiwanese people are extremely relaxed, and I'm, I myself also surprised by this mm. that people everything in the Taiwanese society goes as normal. Nobody's uh, really afraid about this. People even make joke about what Xi Jinping has done, tried to do with Taiwan, and they don't view it very seriously. Mm. So things are very good over there, and the Taiwanese are, you know, dealing with this kind of difficulty that, that they have been dealing with for the past seven decades, mm. like they are doing now. So everything is fine. And uh, I think uh, your, your question, why China, the Chinese feel let down by Xi Jinping led China's reaction? for Nancy Pelosi's um, visit. Mm. I will say that we, we have to recognize one thing. There is no real people's voice in China. All the things that we have seen, the angry people, you know, the, the Vox Populi so-called, mm. mm. are created and led by the CCP propaganda machine. Mm. Because if they want something, they will let you speak. They will create this kind of voice to make people believe that there is, you know, a strong popular voice in China opposing this, opposing that. But actually, it's not. Hmm. Because if, well, one thing is that if somebody is trying to criticize, criticize Xi Jinping, he will disappear right away. Hmm. So the Chinese propaganda machine is still working perfectly. So all we have heard, all we have seen on the TV, on the, you know, um, public hmm. portals are created and allowed hmm. by the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda machine. So we have to recognize that. The people's voice, so-called, has been used as a diplomatic weapon against mm -hmm. the world. Correct, right. but but it's not the people's voice. It's the real voice of the people of China that has actually leaked out, Dr. Rajuliu, where somebody, some people have turned around and asked Xi Jinping, if you're so strong, if you believe Taiwan is your territory, why didn't you shoot down Pelosi's plane? If you really believe Taiwan is sovereign territory of China, you should not never have allowed her to touch down. So you're making all this song and dance just to cover up for that embarrassment. So that, that, that's the kind of uh, taunts that he is receiving internally. Ambassador Parthasarthi, on the other hand, China is trying to flex its economic muscle. When it tells an Apple, an American company, that you have to ensure that your OEMs don't have made in Taiwan or uh, Republic of China mentioned there, and it has to say Chinese Taipei or nothing at all, why should we take that bullying and why is Apple going and requesting the Chinese um, equipment manufacturers, chip manufacturers, please accede to this request? Our iPhone 14 launch will be delayed. Well, uh, let's be quite clear. Xi Jinping wants to set himself in a history as the equivalent of Mao and Deng Xiaoping. And he, one of his greatest ambitions is to achieve his territorial aims. Now, China has territorial claims on Japan, on South Korea, on Vietnam, uh, and all the countries down to uh, Myanmar, and even uh, down to Indonesia, where they have had scraps. Mm. Then they, he 
his first visit just after he took over uh, accompanying it was an assault across the line of control by the by the chinese seizing trying to seize new borders so the man is obsessed with going down in history hmm. we can't repeat what mao or deng xiaoping did hmm. and here you have a chinese leader who wishes to make history by saying he changed china's borders hmm. now just remember he is willing to go to the extent of rejecting a, 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 resolu- a judgment of the world court hmm. which ruled against him and his territorial claims on the philippines so uh, there are uh, there are others now on the line making it so he has a territorial claim on india hmm. he has to assert it yes he can take a few posts here and there but that's as far as he can go with india because mm. the resistance especially in ladakh is very well organized and the last time we even deployed armor there right so uh, we must be prepared that till his th- re-election which is, which will be sometime in the course of the year sooner rather than later uh, he is going to be exert- assertive and a great defender of chinese territories mm. chinese territory is not on international law but on some nine dotted line which they have kept drawing correct and this is a problem which will continue with us except that they we now have a mechanism to see they don't get out of hand there will be uh, w- what i call as uh, nitpicking and minor minor territorial grabbing which will keep tensions going just to show he has uh, more claims on india's borders but that is the way you have to deal with him right the western world dislikes him uh the um all these neighbors i have named you japan south korea vietnam thailand uh, indonesia malaysia all of them hmm. he has border claims on you through this mystical nine dotted line which he put on china's maps and the international court of justice has ruled against international law so you are dealing with the man who is the uh, to my mind no so, uh, so uh, he is set with xenof no so point is lo- lo- he is uh, throwing weight around and is considerably heavy by even by his looks hmm. uh, all around world so we have to play it cool and what we have done i think people in india should know first the quad yeah they chinese are very nervous with the way india uh, japan uh, and uh, us, US and, australia have come uh, and australia have got together now you've got a new uh, uh, grouping to uh, on the other side of the indian ocean with israel uh, 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 japan and the united states so um, we just need to stay cool be very careful that they don't tread into our territories when our troops are not there or looking somewhere else and uh, just uh, go along w- with the relationship mm. he, he is making himself and china unpopular right. that is his problem but he knows pretty well now after uh, his troops were, took some pretty heavy casualties which were no, not but properly no but that's with visa we galwan but one of the aspects ambassador parthasarthi and i'm going to bring in maximilian uh, maxi uh, million hess in that uh, on that aspect is the world waking up to its economic hegemony is the world waking up and saying sooner than later we've got to get away from this entire economic uh, grasp yeah. that the chinese seem to have on us sure we need to say nothing on that because it is ambassador parthasarthi i'm just getting uh, maximilian hess in that on that please. yeah Thank you. Um I know a very interesting points made by all the uh, other commentators as well so far on the economic hegemon. I think there's been a pretty clear realization for a number of years now that trade dependency with China uh is a real area of concern and a risk. Um what we've seen in Beijing in recent days was an attempt to draw a new red line. Other legislators have visited in Taiwan including recently a senior uh, former also a speaker of the House of Representatives the same level as Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan nearly 30 years ago but this is a precedent that exists and it has been established so i do think this is a very clear uh, example of china to expand its red lines that we don't need to worry so much about the internal um stability mechanism but china is not an economic hegemon 
Uh, it exists in a system in which uh, many other powers have very large economic roles, and it doesn't have the kind of credit and money market infrastructure that, say, the United States does. Uh, we see that through the impact of U.S. sanctions on mm. Russia that are uh, obviously impacting so much of the rest of the world. China doesn't have the same ability to do that, and not yet. And I think the world is waking up that China needs to be kind of kept in its place um, b before it does that, if it's going to be so assertive and hostile. But at the same time, it's very clear from you know just the discussion we were having, we are living in a world with more and more security threats. Uh, mm. And of course, China has an alliance with Russia. Russia, uh, and Russia has very clearly spent the last six months trying to establish this order that you can use force to solve uh, these territorial disputes uh, with neighbors. And, you know, that's a, a real danger we face. So far, we haven't seen the Chinese you know, support them outright, but we could very well see in response to Taiwan and in response to Xi Jinping's attempts to consolidate power at home as the Chinese economy feels pressure, the world divide more into blocks. Right. Uh, what kind of blocks do we need? Do we need uh, a rules-based democracy, a rules-based order? Is that is that something that all nations are going to work with? Or are they going to be continuously going to be pressured by the kind of uh, tactics that Xi Jinping employs, where they go for comprehensive national power and they try and do anything and everything to try and, uh, you know, spook uh, the neighboring nation? They want to win wars without fighting a war. So that's what they try, that's their intention. Will that work? Sure. We'll have... We'll have to wait and watch. I have to cut short this discussion uh, because we've got something uh, coming up next. I have to, I'm compelled to take a short break, but we'll take this forward in the coming days. Dr. Roger Liu, Maximilian Hess, and uh, uh, Ambassador G. Parthasarthi. Thank you very, very much for joining us. We're going to take a very short break, ladies and gentlemen, because we're queuing up a very, very special uh, endeavor here in the build-up of 75 years of our independence. India at 75, it's time for the Tiranga quiz. And here's the question. This is going to be the first question when we come back. The numbers are flashing at the bottom of your screen. These are four of our celebrated athletes. All legends by their own right. And of course, those who have brought great laurels to the country. What's special about all four of them? Why are we putting out this picture on the Tiranga quiz today? That's the first question. Who are they? Who all are they? And what is special about today that all four of them are part of the Tiranga quiz? That's our first question when we come back. The number flashing on the bottom of your screen, 0120-434-1895. Pick up the phone, ring it. Four minutes and we are back with the answer. Stay with us.